Hello everyone and welcome to Art Starts Explores. This is a new month, so a new theme exploring mark making. Um, this is the first workshop of three that we'll be hosting in November. Um, so if you've had a chance to check out our introduction video, that's up online and we'll be here for the next two Saturdays uh, live and mark making with you. But don't forget, you can always come back and check out any of our episodes uh, from this month or from previous months by checking out our archive videos online or visiting artstarts.com slash explorers dash online. Uh, so my name is Kay Slater, so the voice that you are hearing right now, and I am the gallery coordinator and preparator at Art Starts in Schools, um, and I will be exploring along with you today. If this is your first time making with us, welcome. We're so happy to have you. If you've done this a, a whole bunch of times with us, welcome back. I'm also really happy to be making with you today. And so um, if you're new, this will be new to you. And if you have been here before, you know what's coming up next. And those are the three rules of explore. So every week we like to kind of set up our space so that we understand so that we're all working uh, in a similar way together. And so I call these rules, you can see I've got the quotes around it for rules, but these are really just guidelines and things that we like to have in mind uh, while we're making together. And so the three rules, First is respect. And so we practice respect. Sometimes we're better at it than others, but we're always gonna try our best and learn from our mistakes. We practice respect by respecting ourselves, checking in, how are we feeling today, and expressing that to the other people who might be making along with us. We practice respect for each other by extending that same courtesy and asking how other people are feeling around us. Maybe we're feeling really enthusiastic and they're not feeling so great. And so slowing down and checking in with each other is a great way to practice respect. We're going to respect our tools. And uh, by that, I mean uh, putting them away when we're finished, using them safely. Uh, if somebody else is making with us and would like to borrow or use the tool we're using, we communicate so that we can always be uh, sharing. Maybe we need something for a lot longer and um, that person, that other person only needs it for a second. And so by communicating, they can ask you, you can lend them the tool, and then you can go back to continuing to uh, use that tool. We also practice respect by uh, respecting and acknowledging the land. And so right here where you see my hands and my art space right now, we're in my studio, or at least you're, you're looking into my studio. And my studio is situated on the stolen and ancestral territory of the Musqueam, Tsleil-Waututh, and Squamish people. And um, I am an uninvited guest on these lands and I have uh, some extreme privilege to be on these lands. And so it is really important to me and Art Starts as an organization that we always take the time to think about where we are situated and the people who have been here since time immemorial and who are still here um, being stewards and protectors of the lands and waters that we have the, the privilege to access. So you might not be here, you might be anywhere in BC, you may be further afield than BC. Um, do you know the land that you are on while you're watching today? Do you know the territories or the treaties that were or weren't signed of the lands that you're in? Take a second to check it out. That's just a few ways that we can practice being respectful. Second rule of the day is nothing is for keeps. Everything that we're gonna to make today, you don't have to worry about it being perfect. You can take things from the recycling bin. Um, and when we're all finished, take it apart, crumple it up, rip it up. Nothing is for keeps. So everything we're doing today is just trying it out. So it doesn't have to be perfect. Which means that we don't have to have any expectations. Sometimes we're drawing, when we're drawing something for keeps or we're making something for keeps, we're uh, we're making something as a gift or, or we're making something to put up on the fridge or frame. We have all these expectations. We have a picture in our head of how it's going to turn out and we can feel really stressed out when it doesn't turn out the way that we had hoped. So for these sessions, we're going to practice surprise. If something turns out really bad, that's not a bad thing. That can be really interesting. What can happen when we make mistakes or when we do something that we didn't intend? 
if something really cool and good happens, then that's great. We might not have ever tried that or learned about that if we hadn't opened our mind and let ourselves try anything that comes up. It also means that we can copy each other. If we're making with other people and they come up with a really cool idea, I encourage you to try it as well. Because sometimes when you're watching somebody else and you're inspired by somebody else, it can um, it can really inform, it can really help you, it can, it can guide your exploration. It doesn't have to be the exact same thing, but by uh, looking and observing the things around you, it can really uh, inspire you to try things that you might not have tried if you were making on your own or if you only made the things that you were thinking about. So that's part of that's part of what we're going to be trying today. And you can comment um, if you have permission in the comments, ask us questions as you're going along, share some of the ideas you have. Let's all explore making together. Okay, so I'm going to move some of these pieces to the side. We know that it's mark making. Put my little host to the side here. You know who I am. And so uh, some of the things that I have collected in my space right now this, uh, for this week is um, some mark making tools. And if you're not sure what a mark making tool is, it's really anything that makes a mark. So that could be a crayon, that could be a marker, that could be a pencil, that could be a piece of chalk. Um, depending on if you have permission, it could be dirt that you grab from outside, it could be uh, finger paint. It could be pasta sauce, <laughs> anything that makes a mark and you have permission um, that will mark up a surface, then you're good to go. That's a mark making tool. I'm going to keep it pretty traditional this week and I'm going to stick with a marker because um, it's a little bit easier for you to see on the screen when I'm working in marker. But anything that you use is right. As long as you have permission and you're not making you're not making a mess that you can't clean up or that you uh, don't have permission to make, then go for it. Anything that marks up the page. And when I say page, uh, I say a piece of paper. You remember how earlier I said we should always check out the recycling bin? I love the recycling bin. It's basically um, a art store in my studio. And so wherever you're making, whether you're making um, in a home or at a friend's house or in a classroom or at a community center or at a foster home, wherever you are, if you have access to a recycling bin, then you have access to all the paper you'd ever need. You don't need a sketchbook. Find paper that somebody already wrote on. I really like the test paper that comes out of printers sometimes because nobody's going to use this. So why don't we make this into our paper that we're going to explore on? You could have it folded in half. It could be messy. Right? Any of this paper is great for exploring and just encourages you that it really doesn't have to be for keeps. This is just for trying. And that's the kind of paper I have. So when I'm talking about mark making, anything that will leave a mark on the paper that you find to explore with today. Okay, so let's explore mark making together. So I've got two things that I think we could try out when we're looking at mark making this week. And the first one, I think, I think what we'll do is we will explore opposites. All right. So just looking even at this sticky here, what do you notice? I used a marker and the color of that marker is all colors, right? Is black, right? And what about these? You might be able to read these. These are words and they say exploring opposites, but what are these words made out of? Letters. And what are these letters made out of? Marks, right? We had to mark up the page to be able to even write. So when you practice your letters, when you start handwriting, um, there are a lot of people who use um, tablets and electronic devices so much now that they'll say that they, you know, they don't handwrite as often. And so if that's you and you're always typing on a computer or touching on a tablet or whatever, sometimes just grabbing a pen or a pencil or wh whatever mark making tool. And if you can't think of something to draw, you're not really sure, but you want to be creative, well then start with the alphabet. And whatever alphabet you know, 
I know the uh, the Roman or the Latin alphabet. Um, so that's that's the one that comes to mind for me. But you might know a different alphabet. Each one of these letters required me to make a mark. And not just one mark. For my A, I had to go down, I had to go to the side, I had to go over the side. What does your A look like? Do you draw it like that? If you don't draw it like that, try drawing it like how I did. Look at all the marks that you made just by starting and doing the alphabet, just A on itself. Look at how sharp the top line is here where I did it and where I, uh, where I ran off when I went really fast off the page. I had kind of this light mark over here. And because I wasn't really careful and I didn't go slow, the, um, the bar in the center that I did, it, it, uh, it bisected both of these lines and it went over the edge. So it wasn't really a clean A. What if I did it in a different tool? What if I did it really small? What if I did it really fast? What if I did it really slow? These are all marks that we're making and you can observe different things just by changing up how you do it, the material you use it, and what your intention is. And so this, I was just checking out what these, what an A, how we could make an A. For these, I just wanted to move my wrist. I just wanted to make some marks on the page and to kind of warm up. So I did a whole bunch of letters. So just looking at that sticky already, we didn't even get to exploring opposites. I already was already so distracted by just the marks that I had made on the page using letters. And if you want to keep drawing alphabets, or if you want to keep checking out your letters as I continue on with this, uh, this activity, you totally can. You absolutely can. If you just want to spend the next hour um, drawing letters or writing your name, in different materials or on different surfaces to see what you can observe, that's great. You're exploring mark making. But if I'm gonna look at exploring opposites, let's keep going. So the letters were up at the top. We noticed that they were in black. We noticed that I used a marker. What about down here? What do you notice? Well, I drew a circle here. I also drew a circle here. But what I did was I tried to examine all the space around the circle that I hadn't drawn, that I hadn't colored in. And so while this is still a circle, and this was um, originally it was the same circle, I tried to make it as different as I possibly can. Can you think of a different way, an opposite way that we could have drawn a circle that wasn't one of these two? And if you want to do it on your own page, I did circle, and then I did another circle. So I started by trying to do similar circles, same circles. And then I went, oh, look at all this space around the outside. Um, what I also did was I went, okay, what's, what's the opposite of a circle? Well, it could have been a triangle, right? Because a triangle isn't a circle. But I decided to use a square. And opposite can really mean um, different. If it's only two choices, right? If you only have... Um, a zero or a one, what we call binary, right? Then an opposite of zero is one. But if we know that, you know, the numbers, right? We have one, two, three, four, five. What's the opposite of three? What's the opposite of five? That can be fun it's on its own. All right, I haven't even gotten to circles. This is what I was talking about, no expectations. Where are we gonna go? Where are we going to explore as we start thinking of these things, and if we're always asking ourselves questions, we'll come up with new and different ways of, of exploring any of these ideas um, without having an end goal in mind. And it's really just about the things that we find, the things we uncover. If we imagine we were walking through a creativity cave together, and all of a sudden we saw a glint of light in the dirt. We decided to turn off the path and look through that pile and see what we could find, we didn't even travel very far. We just got to that pile of dirt and that's exciting. So before I even get to my back to my circle, what's the opposite of three? What's the opposite of five? Well, if we just look at it, at it like a mark, maybe it's the opposite side of it. 
right? It's flipped over. If I'm looking at it from this side to this side, maybe it actually is the same when I draw it, but it's the opposite because it's, it, it's um, the mirror image. A little bit easier to see with a five. Oh, here, I did it like that. There we go, right? Because you can see that the curve started here and then over to the side. And so I had to do the curve this way so that it, it's as if I folded a page that this was on and I folded it down like this. But the three ends up looking the same. But the three wouldn't necessarily look the same if I flipped it this way, would it? What's the opposite of the three then? And so if you're still exploring the alphabet, when you get to the end of the alphabet, you could start exploring the opposite of the alphabet. What's the opposite of A? Maybe the opposite of A is Z, because the first letter of the alphabet is A, and the last letter of the alphabet is Z. Maybe those are opposites. Maybe it's not just a mirror image. Maybe it's uh, a side of an image, right? Just turn it 45 degrees rather than all the way around. What about if we colored in all the space around it? So that gets back to um, that original sticky that I had there, right? So here I'm gonna use, I'm gonna go B and B. And so for this one, what I had done was uh, I went down the path of binary, right? It was the idea that if a circle has an opposite, uh, maybe it's a square, but maybe it's a triangle. There isn't any real answer for that. But then I colored it in, right? Because I wanted all the space around the circle to be colored in. And when I asked you that original question, you know, what's another way that you could do the opposite of the circle? Maybe you came up with something else. Maybe you came up with a couple of different ideas. Okay, so those could be opposites. But now we've got that B. What if we did the same thing for the B? And what if all of a sudden the opposite of B is all the spaces around the B? And so when we're exploring this, what we're doing is we're, uh, we're exploring something called negative and positive space. And so the idea of positive space is when you add something to a surface. So before, it might have been a blank surface, right? It was a blank piece of paper or a blank area that we could draw. And so right now, this is negative. There's nothing there. It's a zero, right? There's, there's nothing. So we can count it as zero. It's negative space. But as soon as we draw something, to uh, define the opposite, right? So exploring opposites, all of a sudden this is negative space because there's nothing in it. And that dot is positive space because we added something to it. So think of positive being you know, a plus sign. So when you're adding something, a negative space being when you take something away. And if we could take this away, if I had drawn that in pencil or you had drawn that in pencil and then you had erased it, right? You'd be taking it away. You'd actually be adding to the negative space. So we've got negative space, we have positive space. And so for this one right here, we were adding to that negative space, right? So we added the B, then we had all this negative space. So we added to the negative space all around it, right? And so now we've got all this positive space and it's bigger and bigger and bigger. And we color in the whole page. And what would that look like? When we were looking at this original um, idea of these circles, I asked you, could you think of another way, another opposite, right? So that's one way of expressing an opposite, and, right? There's no one right way. What if we went, well, if what I just told you right here about that being positive space, well, isn't all of this, all the lines here, isn't that the, uh, the positive space? So couldn't the opposite of this actually be the spot that we don't color in, right? So all of a sudden it's a white circle on a black space rather than a black outline circle that's filled in and on a white space. Well, if that's true, why couldn't we have 
colored in one. So a filled space, sorry, a filled space or an unfilled space. What about size? What's the opposite size of this? Well, maybe it's that. Maybe it's that. Right? So exploring opposites lets us think about um, a different way to express the same thing using a mark. Um, and so whether that's a shape, whether that's letters, whether that's numbers, or whether that's an image, this can be a really fun way of thinking of different ways to express the same thing um, using opposites. Let's do one more activity together. And if you're still exploring any of these things, you wanna keep drawing your shapes and seeing if you can come up with different ways to express your shapes that are opposite of the first way you drew it. And you might be able to draw, um, uh, draw one shape and then go you know, so many different ways. You might, you might be uh, doing it all day and that's okay, right? Just, just exploring the mark making and whatever is talking to you is, is great. So this one was dimension, right? I went from 2D to 3D here. So now there's there's uh, extra dimension to it. So lots of ways to express opposites. Okay, so that those were just a couple of things that we tried on that sheet. But what about a drawing? All right, so for this one, uh, what I'm going to do, and what you can do as well, is take your mark making tool, grab one of the surfaces, and if you only have one piece of paper, keep going in the smaller spaces here. I'm going to go to a new page because it's a little bit bigger for you to be able to see. But there's no reason why you couldn't now use that space to color in or switch up your medium or uh, your um, mark making tool and then use the space around where you've already drawn, right? There's no reason why you have to have a brand new fresh page just because you have a new idea. There's lots and lots of spaces um, that you can keep filling in. That's a fun challenge. Can you fill up a page with nothing but mark making. And by mark making, it's whatever mark you can think of to make. What does the page end up looking like after you're done filling it all up, right? No need to have a, a new and fresh piece of paper. So that's another way we can be exploring mark making. Can you fill up your whole page? Okay, still exploring opposites. What I want us to do I want to take our mark making tool and I want us to scribble. I want us to come up with just a mark that is unique to you. Don't look at anything else. Don't really think about anything else. You want to watch the edges of the paper, so the, especially if you're working on a surface um, that you don't want to mark up. But try to be really loose. Use your wrist or use your fingers or draw from your elbow. However the mark is going to come out, just draw a scribble. All right, there's my scribble. You might have gone back and forth. You may have done a small scribble. You might have gone really big. However you scribbled was great. Okay, so there's two ways that we can be exploring opposites for this. If we think about all the ways that we, we were exploring over here, we know we could color it in. We know that we could work on uh, filling in the negative space so that all we were left were uh, pockets of positive space. Um, we know that we could add dimension to it. We know that we could do a mirror image of it. But what I want us to do now is I want us to identify different shapes that our mark has made and then do the opposite of those shapes. So rather than the long line and all these contours that we did around the edge, pick a spot. And if you ended up doing a scribble that was really dense, like this, get real close and look. Maybe this ends up being the space in the scribble. Or maybe it's the edge on the outside that is the opposite of your scribble, right? There is no one right or wrong way to find the opposite. But for me, I did it pretty loose. And if you want to follow me, you can just try and copy 
my scribble for this activity just to try it out together and then uh, you can make your own later. Okay, so what I mean is I'm going to find a section in here. I'm going to find um, a closed area. I'm going to pick this one right here. And I'm going to color it in just because that makes it a little bit easier for me to concentrate just on that section. All right. And you know what? If you don't want to continue, you just want to color in all your marks, that can be a great way to explore mark making as well, right? Because you're still making marks by coloring in the space. And maybe you'll make a really cool drawing. Maybe you'll make something really interesting just by filling in and coloring in all of these spaces. That's up to you too. And you don't have to do it with the same tool. You could, or sorry, with a different tool. There's no reason why you couldn't fill in a shape using the same um, tool that you made the outline in, right? No rules. However you want to explore the shape, it's up to you. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to, I'm going to take this right here and I'm going to call that the opposite of this is the shape here, right? It's not perfect, but I'm going to try and draw just the shape that I found there. Next, I'm going to do it again. I'm going to find something a little bit, a little bit farther away. I'm going to color in this one. Actually, I'm going to find a couple of them. So I'm going to color for a little bit. And remember, you don't have to color any of these. If you just want to try and find those shapes and then repeat them without coloring them, that's, that's great. That's good exercise for your brain to try and remember and copy without um, making these shapes really obvious. But for me, on a Saturday morning, I appreciate having uh, a little bit of guidance, a little bit uh, of knowledge to know where I can go next. I think I'm going to do one more. I think I'm going to do that one there. All right. So I'm going to try and create the opposite of this shape by just isolating all of these parts as outlines over here. So I've got to think about how far they are in relation to each other, um, how much space there are in between on a plane, how big or small in relation to each other they are to try and get um, something that is similar to this, but, uh, but not the same, so opposite. Maybe up here. And remember, you might not, it might not be perfect. I don't expect mine to be perfect. This is, this is kind of hard, but really interesting. And a different way of looking at things, right? Have you ever looked at a window or a shadow? You know, it was made by something, something, uh, that you can't necessarily see the same way, but you know that it was made by something. But it made something new visually because of the light or the distance or the shadow. There we go. So why couldn't this right here be the opposite of this? Especially because I colored it in, right? So you're really paying attention to each of these. And now I've just got them outlined. I don't have the interconnected lines that connect them together. So that's the opposite. So rather than them being connected, they're disconnected. I filled in these ones and I didn't fill in these ones. And if you didn't fill in these ones and you drew them over here, maybe you could fill these ones in. You don't have to, but you could. These ones are filled in, but I could put a dot pattern in there. That would still be opposite, right? And so this is what's fun about exploring uh, mark making is, is that it can really, it can really inform you. It can really um, lead you down different ideas that if all you were doing at the beginning was sitting down and going, okay, I want to draw a flower. You would, you'd be thinking about that one flower. You wouldn't necessarily be thinking about how to draw the flower. You'd be thinking about the end result. You'd be thinking about drawing the flower. 
This way you can think about how to draw, how to make a mark, and start really observing the, uh, the connection between things or how to disconnect things. Okay, let's explore one more opposite. I'm gonna put this over here, grab another piece of paper, and don't forget, you can use any of those spaces. And there's no reason why if you have a bunch of marks on a page that you can't you know, use those marks either. So I have all of these scribbles now that came through to the other side of the page. There's no reason why I couldn't use the space in between or if I couldn't start connecting these shapes together while I'm exploring mark making and making a new connection. So now I've got a new drawing based on the marks that were already on the page. And why don't I draw a new opposite based on this? Or just keep drawing and see what I can find by adding new marks to the page, right? There's no one right or wrong way to explore mark making. And, and uh, I really think that if you can just discover anything, if you can come up with any new ideas, then you're doing it right. Okay, I'm, as I said, I'm gonna go to a new page just so it's a little bit easier to see, but you can stay on those pages or continue to work on any of those projects. Okay, so what I wanted to do for uh, opposites was us to think about um, the opposite states of things. So uh, for mark making, if we were going to, let's take a face. And I'm going to give this face the emotion of a happy face. And so just like when we were looking at the sticky here and all the things that we found here, when you look at a face, if you, when you drew your happy face, what marks can you observe? Well, I did a whole bunch of these like thin lines. And really, if I was going to take this apart and into pieces, I've got a circle, I've got two dots, and I have a curved line, right? So technically, if I was thinking about it, the opposite of this face are all the pieces. This is an assembled face, and this is a disassembled face, right? So they're the same, but they're opposite because they're not the same state. Well, can we think of another one? So let's draw another happy face. What's another way that we can express the opposite of a happy face? I bet you at least some of you thought that the opposite of a happy face might be a sad face. And think about that as far as a mark making thing. All we did, we, we didn't even change the shape. It was still this shape. It was still the curved shape, but we just turned it in opposite directions, right? Talk about cool. Talk about thinking about all the possibilities with a mark making. We just changed. We just changed the orientation. One was facing up and one was facing down. So we just changed the orientation of a shape and we had a completely different mood, a completely different face. That's, that's just so interesting. Okay, let's do it one more time. Let's see if we can do the same thing. What if, what if instead of doing the opposite of this, we try and take these marks and do an opposite of the happy face. So we use these again in something completely different. Well, what if we had, uh, like this. Now it kind of looks like there's two eyes and a big nose. What else did you see? Maybe you put the dots in a different place. It still kind of looks like a face, right? Because of those, because of the dots. And that's because when we look at our face all the time, we, we start to recognize icons, um, simple things that all faces tend to have in common. And they tend to always have eyes um, in the middle of the face um, um, at, this, at the same level. And even though this nose ends up being really, really tall here, these faces didn't even have noses, but we recognize them as faces. And if I was to take that curve again and bring it down here, right, can we still see that as a face? 
by adding more details, keep adding curves, just curves now, just going to keep adding curves, right? That can be a fun way of exploring um, mark making as well is putting restrictions, finding, finding a shape, and then only using that shape to build a picture. And just use that shape. I'm going to go that. that and maybe I'll do a few like that right and all of a sudden you start doing these cool pictures that you wouldn't necessarily have planned and get to see what happens so this was exploring opposites you could keep going deeper and deeper with, uh, with this idea in multiple different ways. Um, but what we explored today was we explored uh, the opposite of shapes, if shapes could even have opposites. Um, I was just thinking right now when we were talking about uh, triangles maybe being the opposite of a circle, well, what if the um, opposite of a triangle is a star? And what if the opposite of a circle is a half circle? And what if the opposite of a square is a line, right? There is no wrong or right answer, but asking yourself how many opposites or how many ways you can express the same idea in different, um, in, in using different marks can be really, really interesting. And if you wanted to, you could just take one page on its own and ask yourself, how many different ways can I express one mark? So we were talking about a dot before being the opposite of a circle. And we were talking about the outline of a circle. And then different shapes. Color that in. but maybe a triangle is the opposite. And maybe we don't even need the circle there for it to be the opposite. Maybe the opposite is just a square or just a triangle. Or maybe the opposite of that dot is a line. Or maybe the opposite of that dot is if you were to turn it on its side, it was actually um, a straw. And we're just seeing the bottom of a straw. And maybe the opposite of that dot is if it looked like, if we read it like an eye, maybe it's a closed eye. And maybe the opposite of that dot, if it was um, like uh, polka dots on a shirt, maybe it's a bunch of stripes. And what's another way that we could go the opposite of a circle? Oh, we could do, um, so the dot became an O, maybe it's a zero, the line. Oh, we were talking about how that could also be expressed as a half circle. Maybe all of a sudden it's a, uh, the letter O. And maybe, maybe we draw our O's a little bit different than our circles. Maybe they're exactly the same. Maybe we're thinking about O's now, and the opposite of that is a curved, uh, the, the cursive of O. Maybe that dot is like an ellipsis when you're writing, and it means forever, or a pause, or you're waiting for somebody to text you back, or it's an idea that leads into another idea. Or maybe it's three dots that leads to a thought bubble, right? And so by taking that idea and just starting with opposites, we can draw all these different marks that mean different things that were all inspired by that first idea. So go for it. Grab another piece of paper and make a mark. And it doesn't have to be a dot or a line or a square. It could just be your scribble. What's the opposite of your scribble? What's a different way that you can express your scribble? Or just take a page and start with your scribble and then take as many different mark making tools as you can find 
and see what changes when you use the different mark making tools. What do you notice? Well, I, I notice that I need to sharpen this pencil. <laughs> right? What do you notice? How is it different? Uh, what else do I have on my artboard right here? Oh, I'm here, I'm gonna use the really thick line here of the Sharpie. Yeah, what if it's big? It's, it's really small. But if you turn the page upside down, you do the other side. Uh, I'm gonna go like that. <laughs> Sometimes it might be more successful than others. Take that one mark, that one idea, and see how far you can go with it. All right, that was exploring opposites today for week one of mark making. I have so much more to share with you that we can explore in the coming weeks. I'd love to see you again uh, next Saturday. But uh, yeah, come back, check out this video at any time. Um, you can also, if you miss next Saturday, you can check it out after it's posted on Saturday. Um, you can come and check out these videos whenever you are ready to sit down and explore by yourself, with your family, with your grown-ups, with your teachers, with whomever you want to be exploring with. Um, there is no wrong or right way to explore. So whether you're exploring with letters and numbers, shapes, sizes, opposites, assembled and disassembled, different orientations, positive and negative space, the connection between things, patterns and fills. There are lots and lots of different ways of exploring mark making. So I'm going to leave my camera running for just a little bit like I always like to do at the end of Explorers so that I can clean up so that we can get all ready for the next time that we explore together. I look forward to seeing you next time we get together to explore. Thanks! <laughs>